Hello everybody, this is Douglas Allen Frazier with By My Spirit. This is now the 16th of May. Can you believe it? We're already at the halfway point of the month of May. And we're moving forward, moving forward into that next great time of meeting with God at Pentecost. As we move forward, as we move forward in the counting of the Omer, as we've just finished 22 days of reading through the book of Revelation, as God would give us prophetic words to be able to look and see what God was showing us of the revelation of John so that we might understand even that much more that God would have for us. This is a time to rejoice. And right now, and right now, I am sitting in my office, sending this message out to you. But I'm listening to some music, some soaking music, some time of just being with the Lord. And so I want to have this music in the background. I want you to enjoy the the Lord's presence as this series of music of just being in the presence of God was set and recorded to Psalm 103. And according to my Bible, it places this in here. Praise for the Lord's mercies. And I think this is highly appropriate as we just finished, as I said, going through John's book of Revelation, where we could see in it times of tribulation, but we also saw those times of mercies. And the bottom line, the bottom line is we win. We win. The saints of God who come through, we win. Let me just read for you Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Who partners all who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. I know just even tonight, I had a friend on Facebook sharing with me that she was going to be going through a double mastectomy this week. But you know, I read to her and I sent to her just be in the presence of God. Know that His healing mercies are with you. His healing promises are with you, even to God's Word, where it says, who heals all of our diseases. We can read in the New Testament where it says that Jesus went around healing all of those who had various types of diseases. And so if you're listening to this recording and you have some form of an illness, some disease, or you even have a friend that has some sort of an illness, some disease, take this in. Grab a hold of the words and promises of God that He heals all diseases. He is our Jehovah Rapha our healer. Even though my friend is going through, anticipates going through, who's not to say that in God's mercy, she'll get there and in her pre-op, the doctors will say, you're already healed. That cancer is already gone. You can go home and you'll have to not worry about this again. It's happened in the past Why shouldn't it happen again? Why shouldn't it happen for you? Why shouldn't it happen for one of your friends? Because it says, 
who pardons all of our iniquities, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things. Yes, he satisfies. He satisfies our years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. I look upon that right now as I'm getting close to 70 years old in the next couple of months. But you know, I'm going to the gym. I'm working out. I'm going into the sauna. I'm going into the swimming pool. And I'm renewing. I'm renewing some of those areas that need renewing. But you know, it says right here that God, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the sons of Israel. And do you know, as a Christian, we are grafted in. We are grafted in to, as sometimes they say, into the root of Jesse. Into the root of Jesse, where David, King David, came out of. And you see, in that grafting in, we pick up the promises of God from the time of Abraham. And you see, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He's slow to anger and abounds in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Think about this. David wrote that. He could look at where he was, the things that he had committed in his life, still known as a man after God's own heart. But as you read that, we are all men and women after God's own heart. After all, he gave us his son, Jesus. He gave us his son, Jesus, as the final sacrificial lamb, the lamb that takes away all of the sins of the world. The sacrificial lamb that takes away your sin and mine. It's gone. It's covered by his blood. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. That's true. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Stretch out your arms to the east and to the west. You can't see the end. You can't see the end. Stretch out your arms from the north and to the south and you can't see the ends. You see, that's how far, how far our sins and iniquities have been cast away. We can see to the horizon, but it's even over the horizon we can't see. They're gone. They're wiped away forever. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And in the New Testament it says, we have the right to call him Abba, Father, our Father. Jesus, Jesus taught us how to pray. 
and he taught us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Now he could have said, my Father who art in heaven. Singular, but he's opening up the fatherhood of God. It's being to all mankind. He is our Father who art in heaven. For he himself knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. As for man, his days are like the grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. When the wind has passed over it, it is no more and its place acknowledge it no longer. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. Just as we read in Revelation where it says, I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the first and the last. There is no more. And so it is for our children and our children's children and our children's children's children throughout all the ages, throughout all eternity. To those who keep his commands, who keep his covenant, and remember his precepts to do them. We have our part. We have a part to play. Always God has given us a part to play in our relationship with him. Even thinking of it as a family. If we're members of a family, we have a part to play. We have responsibilities within that family obligations to be met. And it says here, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do them. We're to do what God commands us, what he shows us, and move forward in it. We're to go, as Jesus says, we're to go, we're to go and make disciples of the nations. That's not just some idea. It isn't some ideal. It isn't a suggestion. It's a command. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all. Yes, in Revelation, we were reading about the throne of God. God the Father, God the Son, sit there side by side, and from that throne, and from that throne, and from that place, the commands are given. But also up to that throne, and from that throne, Jesus makes intercession for us today. And then it says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. They are the messengers. They are the messengers that bring forth the word of God. We can read about angels coming and speaking to Mary, announcing that she would give birth to a son, the angel Gabriel, the angel Michael speaking to Daniel and saying, it took me all these times to get here. I had a message, but I needed help to get here. And so Michael came along. Michael came along. He's the warrior. He's the warring angel. He's the angel that sits over Israel. He's the angel or the angels that came, strong angels, 
that brought words even to John in Revelation. And John bowed down before the angel, and the angel said, No, 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 you stand up. You get up. You don't worship me. You don't worship me. You worship the one who's upon the throne. Bless the Lord, all you, his hosts, you who serve him, doing his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I suggest to you that you go back and you read Psalm 103. Sit with some quiet music, just as we're doing right here now. And soak in with the wonderful presence of the Lord being with you. Thank Him for all He's done in your life. Proclaim to Him that the secrets that he shares with you, you will listen, you will obey, you will complete. And ask him once again to renew you, to renew you as you bless him and all of his works and all of his goodness. He listens to you. And it says in Malachi chapter 4, that, excuse me, in chapter 3, in Malachi chapter 3, it says that those words that go up from those that fear him are written in a book. They're written down. And they're shown before the Father upon the throne. And he looks at those words that have come up before him. And he counts those that have pronounced those words as though they were the jewels in his crown. So be blessed. Be blessed in knowing that you serve the Lord of mercies, the Lord of healing, the Lord of deliverance, the Lord of love, the Lord of peace, and know that the peace of God passes all understanding. Yet, you can feel that peace and its presence. It's a wonderful thing to know the Lord. And I would even declare this evening that as you move from hearing this, you will move in a new direction because God is sending out his angels to come and be around you, to move you forward, to direct your paths, look for doors to be opened and shut those doors behind you and pick up the keys and let them be locked forever. God is saying that I have streams, I have rivers, I have motions that are coming 
that will fill your life with a newness. God is saying it is time for my people to rise up in a freshness, in a newness that I want to bring to them that they have not known in the past. He's saying, I'm preparing a way for you to move forward, to move forward, to move forward, to move forward into places that you have never known. Call out to me, call out to me, says the Lord, and I will show you. This is the month where secrets are to be revealed. Look for those secrets to be revealed. Call out to me, and I will show you the path. I will show you the river to follow. Because in this time, I am taking you through the old land, and I'm moving you into the new land. It's a time to move from the natural to the supernatural. And God is saying to you, as even in the book of Revelation, look up and hear my voice. Look up and hear my voice that says, come up and come with me and I will show you the things that you have not known in the past. May you be blessed by that word. May you be blessed by that word as it moves you into the destiny that God has established for you from the beginning of time. This is Douglas Allen Frazier with By My Spirit. We will see you here, there, or in the air. <laughs>